planar tracking visual effects are some of the easiest visual effects out there. If you're wanting to be a visual effects artist, you will definitely come across a screen replacement shot at least once throughout your career. So whether you are a beginner to visual effects or a seasoned veteran, let's learn how to do it inside of Blender. So like always, you can go ahead and download the footage and also a photo that we're gonna be using in the description below. To get started, we actually need to go ahead and convert our footage into an image sequence just so it's easier to work with. So inside of Blender, we can come up here to the plus. We're gonna go to video editing, video editing. And then we're going to add a movie and locate our footage. So here is my footage. I'm going to add movie strip. And then we can go ahead and scroll throughout our footage. Uh, this is a pretty long uh, footage. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the first 150 frames of the footage down here. Now, before you go ahead and convert it, I just want to make a really quick note. Whenever you're filming footage for screen replacement, you don't want to put anything on the screen that you're wanting to replace. I find a lot of times that people put a green screen or put tracking markers on the screen and that actually does more harm than good. And the reason being, you can see here that we have a lot of reflections that we can actually use to composite in our screen and make it look a lot more realistic. If you had green screen on the screen, then we wouldn't have as nice of reflections and it'd be harder to composite. And then same thing for the tracking markers, it'd actually get in the way. And since we can see the edges of the screen, we don't really need markers for this specific shot. So now that we have that out of the way, we can come up here to the output. We're just gonna uh, locate a new folder to put this in. So I made a image sequence folder. We're just gonna double click inside of there. I'm gonna name mine screen. Uh, underscore and then I like naming my background plate PLT and then uh, put a dash at the end so we can have a number sequence after that and then hit accept and then scroll down here blender automatically puts a PNG sequence which is totally fine we're gonna put RGB since we don't have any alpha and then the compression we're gonna turn down to zero and now we can come up here to render and render the animation so once it's finished rendering come up here hit X then we're going to go to file, new, general, and don't save since we don't really need that anymore. Now with a new scene open, what we need to go ahead and do is track our screen. So we can open up a VFX motion tracking tab up here. I'm just going to uh, scale these up a little bit so we can see more of our middle scene and hit open. We're going to open up that image sequence that we just made. Once you've located your image sequence, we're just going to hit A to select everything and then open the clip. Right here, we need to go ahead and set the scene frames and prefetch the footage. And while we're at it, we can go ahead and go to render color management. We want to set it from filmic to standard since we want the correct color space. And then also we want to go to the output section and make sure instead of 24 FPS, we want to be in 25 for this specific clip. Now I'm not going to go over everything in this tracking window since I already have a camera tracking tutorial that goes over all of that. Link is here. But let's go ahead and set some tracking settings. So I'm going to go to previous same, uh, normalize, and then in the tracking settings extra, we can set our correlation to 0.9. Now what we basically want to do is get the four corners of our TV. So uh, like always, you can hold control and then click to add a tracking marker and then Alt S to reveal the search area. Now this is the default size and this is actually way too big since uh, it's taking up a lot of the corner. So what I'm going to do is decrease the pattern size something to a 15 and then we can go ahead and maybe bring this to around like a 45. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the tracking marker. And then if I hold control again and click, we can see that our marker is much smaller. So we just want to make sure that we have our tracking marker on the exact corner. You can come up here to the track window and kind of position it more exact. But we just want to repeat that with all of our corners. I'm just going to start on the first frame. So I want to hit A to select all of our tracking markers. And then you can actually hit this button or control T to make them track forward. And you can see that none of our trackers are lost. I actually picked this footage because it was a good footage to track a TV in. So hopefully you don't have any problems there. Next thing that you want to do is you want to come throughout your footage and make sure that all the tracking markers are roughly staying on the edges of the TV. As you can see, mine are sticking really well, but again, you just want to make sure that all of yours aren't bouncing around since that will throw off the planar track. So now that we have the four markers on the corner, we can go ahead and solve 
a planar track. So instead of the solve section that we usually use down here, we can come up to planar track and create plane track. Now you can see that it's created a rectangle out here and that's actually where our screen is going to be. And so now what we wanna do is scroll down here. We want to zoom in and basically position these rectangles where the screen would be. Okay, let's just finish up the last two markers. We wanna make sure that we leave room for the black since the black is what we're gonna be replacing. We don't want kind of weird borders. It'll make sense in a little bit. So now I have placed all of my four corners on the TV. And if you actually come throughout the footage now, you should see that the corners actually stay pretty tracked uh, to the TV. And that is all looking good. You want to make sure that it does follow it. If for any reason your markers are kind of going everywhere, then you just want to make sure that each of your markers uh, follows the edge of the TV since it is using those four points to calculate the flat planar surface. Okay, so now that we have our planar track, we can go up to the compositing tab and hit use nodes. Now we can delete this render layer since we're not doing anything in 3D. We're going to go ahead and add a movie clip node. We can click this little button and open up the plate that we already have in our scene. And then before we get started, let's just make sure we have the node wrangler add-on installed. So go up to edit preferences, add-ons, and then inside of add-ons, if you type in node, we can see we have this node wrangler add-on. You want to make sure that is checked. And that basically unlocks a lot of shortcuts that we're going to be using. The first one being shift control and then click. Uh, that'll basically add a viewer node. And now we can view what we are actually compositing. So this is our footage. Now we need something to actually add on the TV. In the description below is actually an image file that you can use. But really anything that you want to put on the TV, just go ahead and import that in. So here is the image that I want to import. Mine is a little too big, so I'll show you guys how to downsize that a little bit. So let's open with, I'm just going to use paint since I guess that everybody who uses Windows has paint on their machine. Then we can just come up to click this button, resize and skew. And then we want to set that to be 20% of the original thing. That way we can just save some time on rendering since the other file is like 8K and it's going to take forever to render. So now we can just hit save and it should save the file to our new resolution. Back inside of Blender, let's go ahead and import that in. So I'm gonna add a image node, plug that up here, and then we can just find wherever we just saved that. So here it is, I'm gonna click that, open image. And now what we need to do is actually go ahead and combine the two images. Now, if you know anything about Blender compositing, we wanna go ahead and add a alpha over node to go ahead and lay the images over top one of another. And we'll click that. And now we want to actually go ahead and make this go onto our TV screen. So with a new uh, node, we're going to type in the plane track deform, and we're going to place that there. It still hasn't done anything. So we actually need to go ahead and click this button. We need to select that. We need to select camera, and then we need to select our plane track that we have made. I also like changing the motion blur on just to add some motion blur if it's any fast movement in our scene. But now you can see that that's basically put our image wherever we had our planar track. So that is looking really good. However, this is actually the wrong way to do screen replacement. If you remember before when I was talking about why we wanted to have a black screen, it was actually because of the reflections. And since we're doing a alpha over, it's basically putting whatever we have, so our image, on top of our footage and doing no other compositing on top of that. So in order to actually get our reflections in our scene and composite it the right way, we can actually go ahead and get rid of this alpha over. And then we're just going to shift a add we want to add a mix node so what mix is going to allow us to do is use a variety of compositing blending modes and the one we actually want is to go ahead and click mix and we want to come down here to screen so with the screen mix node now we can see up here that we actually have some of our reflections in our scene now so the final thing we need to do is go ahead and render this out i'm going to prolog the image into the composite and then we're going to come over here to output and we're going to make sure it's on 25 fps still and come down here and we're going to set a new folder location you can name the file whatever you want to and once you have that name just hit accept and then instead of a png sequence since it's going to render out so fast we're just going to make sure it's on ffmpeg video then in encoding i like to set it to quicktime and make sure the quality is set to high quality 
Now, if you have a dedicated graphics card, one thing that you can do to actually speed up the compositing section is to actually come up here to the options and then make sure OpenCL is checked. That'll just help you a little bit with pushing some of the compositing to the GPU. Now that that's finished, we can go ahead and come up here and render the animation. Here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. And also, this is when I ask you if you did like the video to please like and subscribe. That helped me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. If you're interested in giving more to the channel, I actually have a Patreon. Link is down below. Anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.